Hello everyone, my name is Nidhish Singh. I'm Vice President in JP Morgan, founder of Incepin Institute. And today I'm going to talk about a very pertinent and frequently asked query. How to do career planning? What is career strategy and steps for that? And how to manage the personal brand? So ladies and gentlemen, I have been addressing such queries and um, talking to various students and professionals for a um, couple of years. And today I think it is much more urgent to talk about such matter in more detail, uh, given the pandemic and slowdown, uh, not only in the economy, but also in the overall job market. There are various graduates and um, professionals who are out of job and they are looking for such guidance. So as way of uh, inter uh, further introduction about, and detail about myself, I have um, completed my graduation from Liverpool University in business finance and strategy. Uh, then I completed the ACCA, Association of Chartered Certified Accountant, the Global uh, Accounting Qualification. I'm also a member of Chartered Institute of Securities and Investment, um, Institute of Director, and um, Institute of Public Accountants in Australia. Um, I'm also a diploma in IFRS and currently pursuing, uh, uh, completing my PhD thesis in area of private equity and uh, uh, Indian economics. Working on my private equity book as well, uh, because that's a very uh, hot area of discussion for Indian economy right now. So back to the topic of career strategy and uh, brand management, I was preparing the some information and the slide to you know share with you while talking and something even more important struck me while I was doing that. I, I recall our time during, um, uh, actually before pandemic, and how was the typical weekend? Saturday afternoon, three or four o'clock, when we all were set to go out, the entire family was getting ready and going to, you know, uh, somewhere I was sitting in the cab or car, the family was there. So the one of the kids will ask, okay, so where are we going? And in that situation, a typical a typical response would be, okay, so today we are going to Infinity or in Orbit Mall or maybe somewhere else. Then the other guy will ask that, all right, so are we also going to Pizza Hut or something like that? I would say no, and we'll provide maybe five bullet points why we are not going to Pizza Hut again. And uh, we have been there for last two times and it was not uh, um, this, 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 etc. The point I'm trying to make is when it comes to our vacation, the trip to mall or cinema, restaurant, we are so much well informed. We do our research, we plan it to minuscule detail and we stick to that. Then I wonder what stops us from planning our career, the strategy with the same intensity, with the same details and um, same foresight. Maybe one of the reasons could be that uh, when it comes to going to vacation and uh, such uh, entertainment, we are more accustomed to plan everything in detail because that's what we see uh, uh, since we are small. We talk more about uh, and we talk about the details of the vacation planning, but we don't talk as much, you know, career and the future planning since childhood. So it comes in, in the habit that we are more inclined to talk about the vacation uh, properly than the career. There are re research from various um, global bodies, uh, HBR, uh, manpower consulting firms that 65% of people do not do the career planning beyond a year. And 40% of people have no clue what they are going to do uh, in future and how they want to uh, navigate their career, what they want to do and how they are planning to achieve their career goals. And that is a worrisome situation because if 40% or 65% of people don't have a career strategy, they don't know where they are going in their profession, that is going to create a, a career stagnation. The career can be just uh, facing a cul-de-sac can face dead end, especially when uh, advanced technology and uh, the change in the business 
are making so many people redundant in that era if one do not have a career strategy that could be a disaster hence i'm here to talk about the steps for career strategy and how to do the personal branding to further give it a power so career strategy and brand management goes hand in hand and we need to discuss both so i'm going to share a slide just to maintain the focus and give you some useful tips so here we are and we can start with the discussion on how we can step up during the uncertain time using the personal brand and career strategy so before we start the career strategy let's define this what is the career career strategy methodology as strategy as a word says that it is a planning to move from point a to point b in a given certain time using certain resource skill and input and the way we plan and execute this is called career strategy so if we want to strategize our career we need to know where we are what is our strengths and weaknesses what is our resource and strengths how we can use them or do we want to use them or we want to develop more strengths and then we can attach a timeline for each goals of course we need to have the milestones as well so we need to break down the entire journey in small steps we need to define the resource and strengths to achieve that and attach a timeline then it becomes a goal and it is not just a wish it's just it's just not a hope because hope cannot be a good planning hope cannot be a good strategy that okay i think things will improve and i will get my dream job that cannot be a strategy that cannot be a plan we need to have a conscious effort to achieve something so that's the essence of career strategy and uh, i'll suggest you a few tips and tool uh, how to complete each step so the first step in the career strategy is introspection what what do we mean by introspection it is about knowing uh, uh, ourselves looking at our own uh, capability and weaknesses and improvement area introspection by the way is also considered one of the five core attributes of uh, leadership so self awareness introspection these are the core element of any good leader as well so when we introspect we will know our strengths the weaknesses what motivates us what are our what are our values which is driving our day to day behavior okay so in one sentence it is hard to fully get the gist what i'm talking about hence i have developed a tool to help you find out uh, your strengths weaknesses and do the introspection more methodically so here we go with exercise 1 which helps in this introspection it is called swot analysis so what are our strengths weakness opportunity and threats as a person generally uh, big corporates and the companies uh, perform this swot analysis to understand their strengths and weaknesses and how they can handle opportunities and threats in the market but it is not that it has to be only for the corporate and the companies we as a person or the professional we also have those kind of strengths weaknesses and the threats fears and opportunities out uh, waiting for us so i have defined here what are the strengths meaning so for example strength is what do we excel at what skill knowledge abilities personal traits and experience can we offer as employee what are skill and experience in the industry uh, in the industry that is um, our forte our strength right then comes the weakness means where are we not comfortable what are our weaknesses what performance we are not good at where we need to improve opportunities there could be massive opportunities as well in the market if you are very good in innovating and uh, and uh, planning a process better there are massive opportunities out there in the market because everyone is trying to improve the, improvise their process and uh, there are requirement for professionals 
So that could be your opportunity. The threat, threat is that AI and advanced technology is coming and it can automate the jobs. So that is a, uh, there is a threat of redundancy that many jobs can be gone. So all these are essentially critical for us to understand our own personality, our strength and weaknesses and what deserve our focus. Now coming, coming back to the introspection part. If we have done that well, then we have to reflect on some other aspect. Why reflection is important? Because everything that we have analyzed as the opportunity or we have seen as a threat to us might not be a matter of immediate concern or even long-term concerns because not every time a threat is going to impact you or not every opportunity is an opportunity for you that you should focus on. You need to be selective in your opportunity and so for threat as well. You need to really define your strengths well and maybe polish it further and you need to improvise upon your weaknesses. Maybe not all the weaknesses are important to improvise. So you, you may uh, drop the worry for some of the weaknesses, so to say, right? So how do we want to address our outside opportunities and threats and where we have an edge over others based on the learning and life experience? Everyone is unique, always remember. And that uniqueness, if we focus, if we reflect on our uniqueness, it will be much easier to plan our career because we often try to compete with others. We forget to look inside and find out our strengths and un uniqueness. So if we try to leverage that uniqueness and reflect on our own life journey, it will be easier to build upon our strengths and compete in the market. In fact, I mean, competition is not needed if we uh, do the proper reflection because we can create our own opportunity. We, can, we don't have to compete head, head, neck on neck with others every time. And that's the whole idea of reflection. Then based on the reflection and introspection, basically, and actually before we move on to next step, uh, we can look into some tools for reflection as well. So let's go to exercise two for reflection. And here we come. So career strategy, exercise two, we need to make a chart of all the different life experience, the skill that we achieve, the achievement which we had in our last uh, in last opportunity and the employment and in the current employment we need to list down everything so organization name position held achievements what did, did we achieve we reduced maybe 20 percent the cost automating maybe 25 percent of the task what skills we are used we use some automation tools such as uh, acceptors maybe uh, machine learning tools or you use macro, visual basic coding, which was your skill and uh, you're good at planning the entire process end to end. Life, life lessons learned. Now, now life lesson is not necessarily the skill or a technical lesson only. It could be something relating to your uh, reflection on interpersonal skill set, your values, your ethos, your principles, and how they are supporting you or maybe obstructing your progress. Often what, what happens is that um, you are very forthright in all situation, which might not go well with others. You might need to find out how to, you know, give the same message or feedback to somebody which does not offend them. How to become more constructive in giving the feedback and how to go well with others. So these are the life lessons that we learn from each opportunities, right? And it's not necessary that we have, uh, only one achievement or one skill used from one organization. You can have one organization and many achievements and skills as well. And of course, life lessons. So I request you to fill up this table and that will be helpful to reflect. Also, what are the three most significant events in my career? Now, that is not about the appraisal. It's not about getting the new project you need to reflect what were the inflection point, what were the changing 
uh, point in your career which has either helped you or harmed you and what did you learn from that as well so that will give you a, that will become a guiding pole for you a flashlight for you to use or avoid in the future right so this way the exercise to help you complete the reflection now we are back to step 3 awareness so after completing first two step now you need to gather some data facts numbers and do some research because awareness is about as much about internal is about outside as well external as well so what is skill experience and expertise market is looking for there there is a lot of talk about applying blockchain in financial or hr or education industry there is also a buzz about uh, accountant and finance experts can also learn ai and machine learning of course without learning much of the coding but still uh, a lot of uh, high level details can be learned and and utilized by the uh, finance professionals are those skills which market looking for something that that you want to learn or there are other skill set as well which you can choose from there is also news about uh, and a lot of buzz about uh, skill of the future which has a long list of different skill set that also includes communication skill interpersonal skill ability to connect with people networking uh, empathy social skill ethics uh, learning the advanced technology digital technology data science and applying them you know uh, plus client centricity focus on um, what matters to client sales and marketing skill set these are all part of skill of the future so if you try to find out all such hot skills which is going to define the job market and employment opportunities in next decade from 2020 to 2030 that will be a very good area to start with so google it uh, world economic forum harbins school and harbins review um, then consulting firms like mckinsey bcg all all of them are providing a raft of research on skill of the future you can find out explore yourself and then you can choose what you want to pursue or what what really uh, you know drives you so make a list of uh, those skills that you think can be on your radar or that you want to pursue once you have that skill set then you can take the next step but let's uh, also use uh, another exercise exercise 3 to do this more methodically and learn about your own persona that is also important so to learn about your own persona to become aware of about uh, aware about your own uh, personality and your skill set uh, and interpersonal skill we have made a list of some uh, some words and i request you to circle or bold ten such a skill which you think defines you and be outright honest about this because it is not about anybody else it is about you you don't have to tell it to anyone else it is a self reporting tool so you select any ten skill set or the word that defines you and try to draw a pattern try to see what those is, uh, words are telling about you because that will also create um, internal awareness for you so we have talked about the awareness which is external about the market what market is looking for but on the same time it is important that you also understand yourself better what are the key words that drives you what what is something uh, that you are known for what makes you uh, running you know many times people are not so excited about couple of uh, work or functions but on the same time some other type of works just uh, drives them you know uh, highly motivated so you need to find out those words those uh, trigger words so that is the awareness step number 3 step number 4 is the priority so we have talked about all the skill of the future the different uh, 15 20, 20 different skill which is going to be in demand in the market for our next decade starting 2020 to 2030 so not all these skill sets that you have enlisted could be your immediate priority because of course you will be already maybe um, in the full time job or doing something else some other courses so you also need to 
look into how much time that you have based on the time what are the skills that you want to learn first maybe some of the skill have immediate market demand or there could be frequent employment opportunities in those fields so you can go for those skill set first so set your priorities and list three to five skill set that you want to pursue and put a number number sequence against that so that you know which one you are going to start and complete first or maybe you can do one or two together so you need to make your list of priorities and finally the really the exercise that will give you dopamine the the chemical that gives you good feel good factor so the milestone so break down all your career strategy priorities learning goals objectives in small task in small achievable goals so and those goal have to be and the goals have to be smart it has to be specific measurable you need to have a tool to measure whether you have achieved it or not maybe certificate completion of certificate or maybe score it has to be achievable and of course realistic time bound um, um actually uh, relevant and time bound so make the goal smart break it down in small pieces and attach a timeline to each of the goals then you can start tracking whether you are making progress or not and what you need to do to push yourself to make the required progress as per the milestone without a milestone all the first four steps will not help you because many people know what they want to do or even awareness and priorities they have they would have completed four steps but you know there are like um, 35 percent people in general the research suggests fail to draw the small pieces of the goals objective and they fail to attach the milestones timing they don't attach the timeline against the goals and because of that it just become a wish a hope and they never achieve this so the fifth step the milestone is very very important again there is a tool to do that career development plan where do i want to be in two years in terms of job industry functions and what are the skill needed where do i want to be in five years what are the action plans then what is the next step required make a list of target company where you want to um, send your resume after developing the skill set it will give you a very clear and visible target that if you develop the skill you can apply to those companies so provide yourself some carrot some incentive to achieve the goals right if you want you can also use something called um, gantt chart that is a tool to break down the objective and attach a timeline in an excel format or in a ppt so that gantt chart you can google it you can find out that can help you in drawing the milestone and sticking to that okay so this is the methodology for uh, drawing your career strategy and working on that the next step after you have a career strategy you need to apply for job you need to keep applying and learn from job and how how to do that you need to again get organized that means make a list of the people who can help you who you can connect to what are the job in uh, mar uh, jobs in the market develop resume for different types of jobs or domains within your area of expertise develop a career uh, a cover letter when you send the email and connect to people also follow up because a follow up has the power to keep people in loop and remind them that you're looking for the job and th sometimes people forget that you have sent the resume so getting organized means having a methodical plan after you apply how do you apply and uh, uh, having things in control when you are applying to a particular job try to find out and do the research on the company how, what they like what kind of people they like what is their organizational culture and accordingly you can tweak your 
resume, your CV and uh, cover letter. Also, you can prepare accordingly for your interviews because then you know uh, what is the priority of the company, how what kind of people are needed and uh, who they prefer, right? So these things are extremely important. And another key point is be realistic. Often people don't have the experience of the corporate world sometime and they uh, demand too much. They have unrealistic targets. And because of that, a great opportunities slip out of the hand because they want a perfect opportunity. And those often do not exist. So be realistic with your am ambition and tar target. How to search for the right job? Networking is critical. Send later to a specific business, heads, HR managers, hiring managers, your friends, colleagues in different corporates. Ask for the referrals. It will be useful even to call companies if you have the number of right people. Respond to employment ads. If the company has given the ad, they have taken the, the pain to do that. That means they are likely to listen if you respond. Use the internet to maximum. We are in a digital world and digital era. Internet can be a good friend. And register with employment agency, HR firms, consulting firms, because they are the one who can connect you to the right opportunity and also guide you what to do. So searching for the right job, we have talked about this and 53% uh, of the internet hires come through the company's own website. So the website of the corporates, their own career pages are extremely important. So send your resume, continue to update your resume in the database and also uh, refresh it time to time so that uh, your resume is on the top. Also, when you're updating the resume in, uh, on the career portals such as uh, Noki.com, Monster.com, etc., basically you need to make the changes uh, which is relevant and also frequent so that your resume is um, updated frequently and it stays on the top of the list. Because after some time, if you have not updated it, it becomes uh, it goes down in the uh, list. So continue to refresh and update your resume when you have posted the, the, them on the job portals. Leveraging social media means connecting to hiring manager, HR managers, recruitment, recruitment consultant, responding to the uh, ads, uh, be, be uh, updated on LinkedIn, update all your profiles on the various portals. There are uh, right now dozens of various career portals and we'll provide the list of uh, almost 25 career portals at the end of this slide. So there are many, many portals need to leverage them, update them because ultimately you are going to get the responses from them. So it is worth investing time there. Also make a dedicated time every week. Take the time out to dedicate on updating your resume and uh, respond to the ads because if you just leave it to the chance, you might miss some of the key opportunities which pops up time to time and you might forget or you might have not seen and hence you can miss those opportunities. Also, when you're online, digital world, you need to be very careful about what you post, what kind of image that you have created, what people talk about you on Facebook or LinkedIn after seeing your post. These things are important. Hence, try to avoid controversial posts, something out of the line or something extreme views. You know, uh, it can hamper your or impact your opportunities, your um, your career pathways. Because in, in today's world, almost more than half of the employers Google the employees before they make hiring decisions. So you don't want to be seen some somebody who have completely um, eccentric views about something and which might not be liked by your potential hiring managers. So the next part that we come to, and it is critical for job seeker, building your own, building your own brand and online presence. So what is brand? What is branding? Generally, we have seen any product which functions like others and um, similar substitute products, they earn a premium value. Everyone talks about them. When you try to really see what is extraordinary with them, it might not be as noticeable 
but their brand and their online presence are definitely much ahead of the competitors. The same goes for human. And why it is so? Because we are living in the area of chaos and data overload. There is information overload load everywhere. Everyone is bombarded with tons and tons of megabytes of data. In such situation, don't you think that it is very easy to be missed out? People don't care, you know, how good we are about our technical uh, skill functions um, and our, uh, our and our achievements. It may not be really material to them, especially given that so much data is you know, crossing everyone's eyes every second. Then how to stand out? How to really make the impression? How to make people st stay on your resume for 30 seconds? How to get people to your profile and learn about you? There's just one way, that is branding. And how do we do branding? That is also important. How do you personally you know, be known for something? Many times people think personal branding means you know, talking about ourselves, talking about us every time, that we are good in this, we are good in that, and we can do this and that, and we have achieved this much. It is completely wrong assumption. Branding is not about talking about ourselves. Branding is about others. So I'm not saying that, okay, we need to brand others, but I'm saying that when you need to develop your personal brand, it is about focusing on others. Because always remember one thing uh, about the human behavior that people don't really care how much you know, how much uh, expertise that you hold. What people really try to know is if you care. So people don't care about how much you know, they want to know how much you care. It's the other way around. And once you prove, once you show, once you are honest about this, that you care about people, you care about others, you care about your profession, you care about your professional network, you care about helping others, you care about you know extending hands to the, the weaker part of your profession, the um, new professionals, in your community, that's where people will care about you. And once they start to care, you are developing a brand. Anyway, in the business world, it is the trust which plays a huge role. It is the emotions, the behavior, it is the confidence in others which drives the business. People don't often want to hire the best people. They want to hire the people who they can work with, they can trust, and they can rely. So that's where the branding comes. We need to focus on how we add value in the life of others, how others will start to like us and trust us. That's the essence of branding. So how, how, how do we do that? So almost every brand conveys a message. Every brand conveys a story. We know that. We see apples. We know Rolls Royce. They have a storyline. They have an a image, a, a prestige, a function a technological superiority that is conveyed through their logo and that logo is co constantly trying to get the importance and the visibility through the branding and storytelling. There are stories and stories which is in a subtle way conveyed to us every day. That's how the brands are made. So in this world of overwhelming information, we have to stand out through our personal branding. So here are a few steps. Perform your SWOT. We have talked about SWOT earlier. Uh, and that is useful even at this stage uh, when it comes to the personal branding. So strength, weakness, opportunity, and threats. So you need to know what you're good at and what you're not and what the market is looking for accordingly. Develop your profile. One tip I can give you, you is you can register a domain for your name. So take that domain name and develop a quick website. You don't have to spend too much. There are various tools and uh, 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 fr friendly website nowadays, which will provide you the uh, framework and all the ready, uh, ready-made tools where you can customize the website and make your own profile and the uh, website that will help you to tell others 
what you're good at, what is your achievement, where you have worked, what are your skill set, what we'll talk about you, uh, what, what are your some hobby interest and what is your voluntary experience, you know, what are, what are your um, extracurricular activities. You can provide all the key relevant information very strategically though on your website. And you can refer that on LinkedIn profile, various other profiles in your resume so that if you want to know more about you, they can go there and they can explore all the good, good information about you. So that could be a very potent and important branding tool to develop a website of your own. Second step, analyze, analyze your competition. Who are your competitors? So again, generally it is done by the companies for their competitors, but it is equally important and required for professionals as well. So in the professional world, what is your competition? Other professionals who are developing themselves, what market is trying to you know, tell us? And there are some professionals who are quickly catching up those and up, upgrading themselves. So that is your competition and you need to be also on the top of this. If you know what market is looking for and you provide that, that is a brand. If you develop yourself accordingly, that is a brand as well. Somebody who has done uh, excellent accounting qualification or um, a, a, any course some 20 years ago or 30 years ago and they have not learned anything new, they are outdated. Nowadays, we have plenty of educational materials. Education is get, uh, or the knowledge is becoming free every passing day. More and more educational videos and uh, books, everything are uh, propping up on online market, on online um, uh, um, websites, resources. YouTube is also uh, filled with so many educational videos. Of course, professional bodies like uh, ACCA and uh, um, uh, such um, accounting bodies are encouraging employees uh, and members to ramp up their skill set, to learn new skill through their continuous professional development program. Because without their accountants and member, developing themselves, they cannot stay competitive. And the same is true for all of us. We need to beat the competition by upgrading our knowledge and skill set. And if you uh, look at the various uh, news online, even some of the uh, richest billionaires, be it Bill Gates or Warren Buffett and so on and forth, they are avid readers. They read books uh, almost every day. They are known to complete um, one or two books every week. So look at the pace of learning they have. And so it is required for all of us. Professional goals. So aligning our passion and vision, basically, is important for professional goals because ultimately what happens, we have set the goal as we have discussed in the career strategy that we want to say, get uh, to equity research in next three years. But if getting to that goal require us to upgrade ourselves, learn a new skill set, or maybe go into a particular project, then we have to do this. But the one bottleneck could be that if we are not interested to learn those skill set, we cannot achieve the goal. And why we are not interested sometimes, it's just that we don't like that subject. We might not, you know, uh, like that kind of um, discussion or the market. We don't like, like the tools or techniques that are required to be learned. And hence, we have set the goal, but we don't want to learn the skill set required to achieve their goals. So what happens? The goal is not never achieved. The milestones are missed. So somewhere, we need to also understand that when we are setting the goals and milestone, we also need to be aware about our own passion. And how do we know about passion? That's where the reflection comes that we have discussed earlier. So align your reflection, align your um, passion to the goals and goals will be easy to achieve. There, there is another way, good way to align our fire, the passion basically to our professional goal is to know the why of what we are doing. So Simon Sinek, a very well-known business 
um, leader and executive coach, and also a great speaker, has developed a concept called Golden Circle. So Golden Circle explains that every organization should know three questions, which start with what. So ultimately, all the organizations know what they are selling, what they are doing, what is their market and industry, and what is their competition. And a great many of them, most of them also know how they are going to achieve what they want to achieve. What mostly the organizations, companies, and even many, most of the individuals also feel is they don't know why they want to achieve what they want to achieve. And you know, why, what is the purpose behind this? Why they want to do? If you ask any CEO and the board that they want to really capture a new market and they want to improve the price earning ratio, they can give you a lot of detail about why. But if you ask why, uh, sorry, how, how they want to achieve, but if you ask them why they want to achieve this, the answer could be very plain that, okay, because the, it is a matter of competition or it is a matter of, you know, making the shareholders and stakeholders happy, right? And this is a typical answer for 80, 90% of the companies. But then there are some companies which can answer you their why even better. They will tell you that they have a purpose. They have a social goal. They have a um, high, higher level objective before driving innovation. They are not doing the innovation just for the price earning ratio or getting uh, get a, bo get a bro bonus or dividends to the shareholders. Some companies might have uh, an entire set of objective, which is important for not only the business and industry, but also the entire mankind. They have a very strong purpose behind this. Some are trying to go to Mars and the moon. Some are trying to uh, break, break the you know, barriers of the highest temperature. They want to make the fusion possible on the earth. Some companies are trying to um, break the speed of sound for carrying uh, hu human from one place to another place. So these are the missions some companies are sticking to. Once any company or any individual find out that mission, that why, then achieving the goal becomes easy. Achieving the vision and sticking to that becomes very natural, very, very easy. That's why you see that world-class athletes, world-class uh, 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 experts, they commit themselves for years and years. They really practice for 10 years, for 15,000 hours sometimes. They just do that to run for 15 seconds. There are 15,000 hours of efforts go into running for 15 seconds because they know their why. Otherwise, just with what and how, you can't stick to such plan. So know your why, it will be easy to achieve the goal. And of course, once you achieve the, the goal, you make a professional image, your brands also develop. Differentiating yourself, how do you make yourself different from others? What are the uniqueness in you? What is your unique selling point, the USP? What is your value proposition? Discover yourself and utilize those information to make yourself different from others. So that, that would really give a message to the entire ma market that this guy is an accountant, is a professional expert, but is very good at, and that sentence, what you want to, you to feel, uh, what you want others to feel, how you want others to define your expertise, how they can say that, okay, you are a good accountant and, and finance expert, but you are also ex exceptionally well in, one or two things, how you want others to define that. And that is the differentiating factor. Once you have that, you have a different PR, a, a different image of yourself. And people will come to you for those advice, expertise, and supports.
So differentiating yourself, continuing, once you have the foundation of your brand by defining yourself, you have objective, you have goal, and you are con continuously pursuing that, you will be building a brand that people will be looking for. For example, many people are ex uh, many people have the expertise in their respective field, but they don't share with others. In order to differentiate yourself, in order to be known for something, you need to share your knowledge. So as I said at the start of this discussion for branding, that people don't care about how much you know unless they know how much you care, right? So you need to share your expertise, your knowledge. You need to share other posts, especially if it, uh, somebody is looking for the help from you or others. Like their comment, provide your insight, your comments on LinkedIn. Provide your insight and the visions about something that is happening and matter of concern for everyone. Connect with people as often as possible. Extend helping hand. Ask if you can uh, share your insight if you know they are looking for help. These are the things for using you know uh, which you can be known for your expertise. Once you share your expertise, people will think and remember that you know because. You might have heard that people never forget. People can forget what you said. People can forget what you gave. But people can't forget what you, how you treated them, how you know, help, help them in the need of hour. So your expertise can be a tool to help others, and that's how you will be remembered. And more and more often you do, people will remember you. People will know you, and that will grow in geometric progression. If you convince two people that you are a good professional, it will be communicated to five people six people and then it will grow with time so some other handy tools how to create your branding and networking is and networking is important and when it comes to networking it means connecting to your peers colleagues from uh, earlier com companies as well uh, saying hello to your classmates time to time maybe your HCA classmates, CA classmates, your MBA classmates, etc. Say, uh, stay connected. Know what is going on. People are happy when you ask them how they are doing and if everything is good. If you are interested in them, then they will be interested in you because they don't they don't just want to hear your problem. So having an intense interest in others and to support them, that will make you a good networker as well. Networking is a critical skill and one of the skills of the future for 21st century, right? Establishing a presence. When it comes to establishing a presence, the aura, the charisma, the magnetism, the appeal, that is important. People should be feeling comfortable talking to you. When they talk to you, they should be feeling, you know, they don't have to hide or they don't have to think too much before expressing their views. Be, and the same thing should be um, from your end that you should be uh, very, um, you know, transparent in the approach. That will build the trust and trust will multiply in a good networking uh, benefit. It will pay a dividend when it comes to connecting more and more people. People want to talk to somebody who can be trusted. And you need to focus on building the trust when you want to increase your networks. Develop your story and journey. That is important. So often I advise people to have an elevator pitch ready. Okay. Often people are going through a lift or they're in cafeteria and their managing director, their CEO just came across and said, hello, how are you doing? That is an opportunity for maybe five, 10 seconds, or maybe 30 seconds, maybe one minute, you know, that you can tell something that strikes a, a, a spark. You can tell something, you can, you know, suggest something, you can talk something, you know, that, that becomes a lightning moment for somebody who is listening to you. Often when your CEO asks, how are you doing? The question is not about, did you have the breakfast or lunch or not? Or how's the AC in the office? They want to, you know, they just 
opened up a way to uh, start a conversation or they just say, said hello and uh, you can still say that you know uh, everything is good and uh, we are and uh, you are so happy that one of the client signed up for the service today and uh, they are going to spread the word further so you know to come up with such response you need to have your elevator pitch ready for various duration have one for 30 second one another one for 1 minute some for 2 minute and 5 minutes so at for different duration have your elevator pitch ready because you never know at what moment at what time that could be required who comes across suddenly and uh, can be a life changing moment so have that kind of elevator pitch ready for professional gathering for office and for any such networking event so that you don't have to think too much at that point of time and you can still be at your best so develop your story and journey develop your elevator pitch and be ready with your arms and ammunition whenever such moment comes you are ready so del carnegie carnegie one of the one of the best author and the coach in the last century who has uh, written plenty of books and uh, have been a uh, 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 expert in teaching how to interact with people how to behave in society he made a very good point he said that you can make more friends in just 2 months by being interested in other people then you can make friends in 2 years by just trying to get others interested in in you because when you try to get others interested in you that often does not work when you are interested in others that is the quickest way to build the trust network and build build a brand determine your niche audience of course when you are uh, when you are trying to project your own brand when you want to be known for something you also need to decide which specific market you need to target what kind of people you want to be connected with what kind of people should be interested in you it's just like you know any product that that is launched once the product target a particular niche focus all the energy there it is easy to win and then you can replicate that strategy in different niche but at one given point of time try to target one particular niche if you are an engineer you are a computer engineer or if you are a financial expert try to find out a particular domain in your industry where you want to focus first and convince people that you are an expert that is easier you can also do this uh, it, it, this way uh, linkedin for example again is a great network to build your brand professionally so when you are trying to of course i i told to you about uh, being interested in others and how to connect and how to um, like and comment and share your views but also try to stay focused when you are trying to share your expertise your writing notes blogs articles try to remain consistent and focused on the particular point if you just keep jumping the topic from emotional intelligence to ai ai to marketing and sales or then back to leadership and again to finance and uh, global business uh, people will be confused your readers will be confused that what is your forte what is your area of strength what you should be known for so try to hammer on the same point then the iron will be hot that's the strategy of brand management so develop one niche which you are expert in which is your strength you have work experience you have academic expertise and continue to write about that write frequently write regularly appreciate others comment and feedback you know respond to people when they give a comment on your write up try to learn from that and this will again enhance your not only writing skill not only the quality of your writing but also it will give a very positive image to others that you are active and you are responding to their comments so that will be a massive boon for your personal branding networking why it is so important because various scholars such as peter drucker and various research have also suggested 
that networking is so critical that many, many big business school focus on the networking of their students because that's what helps them in the future, getting the right job, getting the right network, getting the right support for their uh, entrepreneurial efforts, their business, all this boils down to how strong is your network. So you have to decide your target and if, if you are looking for the job and opportunities like the market currently we have, it is even critical. 85% of the jobs are filled through networking by th uh, through the reference, through people who know each other. No? Because people trust their employee or their friends. If somebody who are in touch with the recruiter the, and uh, uh, those colleagues, your friends refer you, refer your CV, your resume, your cover letter, it is highly likely that you will be considered as compared to you as a, as a stranger send a resume to the hiring manager and the manager have no clue about you. And if the manager cannot even find you online, if there's no personal reference, if there's no referral uh, internally, you know, it becomes much more difficult to be considered for the job. Though I'm not discouraging that uh, applying online do not get heard, they also do. And as I said earlier, Amongst all the online applications, 55% are through the internet of the organization uh, of the company and the organization. However, a great many or majority of the hiring is done through the referrals. Referral means the friend of the hiring manager, or actually the colleagues of the hiring manager, or the uh, somebody who is already working in that organization, and they have their own good brand, and if they refer your resume to the hiring manager, they, they are considered quickly. And in all, all those respect, it, um, it is not even that there is any compromise in the quality. The quality is still very good. It's just that you get the attention when you go through the right channel. Networking strategy. So this is an overall effort that you make on the social media. And when you are writing something on LinkedIn, you can share on the Facebook, on the Twitter, on um, uh, Instagram, because you, t you need to leverage the same writing across all the different platforms. Because more and more people are connected nowadays with all these tools. You can make your own videos and upload on YouTube, on the Facebook. These are all the tools which are almost free and still give you the opportunity to connect to the wider audience. And once you are known for something, when everyone talks about you, about your skill set, nothing sells better. That's a great way to even be heard by the hiring managers, by the target organizations. If they are searching you on Google and they find two, two three nice write up or blog written by you, or one or two videos from you, which is on the subject matter, trust me, you know, that will impress them. It will increase your chances of getting hired manifold. Not by one or two X, it could be five X chance of getting hired. If they will see all this write up, your videos, your, um, your blogs and people's comment, everything, that's a great way to uh, get hired and make your brand. So that's why the quote of Robert Kiyosaki here, the richest people in the world look for and build networks. Everyone else look for work. Because the value of network is cannot be exaggerated. It's massive. And that's why some of the best business people, the executives, they really invest heavily on building the networking. So network is important. Network is net worth. Publicize. So publicizing is about outreach to the maximum number of people, getting to know more and more people and serving them. That way you are heard 
by many people. So publicize your purpose is to make it as easy for people to learn about you. You should be trying to be, you know, on all the big platforms, try to uh, be in the right groups, in the right places, in the right networking events, you know, so publicize your presence, your strength, your um, contribution to organizations, to society. And that will support your brand because you remember everything grows in geometric progression when it comes to branding and social uh, networking. So attend all these events, networking events, try to take the help of the social media groups and uh, leverage that one. And when you're doing this, remember three C's of branding. Clarity, you should clear a very, uh, you should convey a very, very clear message. What you're good at, what you do, what is your vision, what is your value and principles. Be clear, be consistent. Don't change it often because that confuses your audience. And be constant in the approach. Be regular. If you're posting something, post every two, three days or on a weekly basis. Try to post frequently. Be regular so that people are uh, kind of constantly looking for your updates. They know that something else is coming. Otherwise, if you are random, then people will stop expecting your views, your comments, your shares, your uh, updates in the marketplace, in the social media. So be constant, be regular as well. You can also help people to read, know about your content and request them to share your post. Keep the social sharing buttons on your blog. Keep subscribe button on, on your YouTube. And this way, you can connect to more and more people through your networking events, your videos, your blogs, your articles, your write-ups. It can up, uh, get to more people if you take some of the best practices. Peter Drucker on networking. It is surprising, but it's true. He has been he ha he has he has been considered father of the management and leadership in last century. He wrote so many books which are um, uh, 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 kind of the guiding pole for the management students. So he said, more business decisions occur over lunch and dinner than in the any other time or in the meetings. That is so true. I, I can really understand and appreciate the fact that it is the fact. So many critical decisions about the project, about the training, about the promotions, about the hiring, about the uh, various other things, you know, they are taken on the in, in the informal discussions, in the meeting room, in, uh, uh, in the lunch, in the dinner, in the party, in the annual, annual events, during the coffee break. The because reason is that human are still emotional being. We think that we are rational. It is not. We think we go by the facts and the data always. It is not. All the key decisions are taken emotionally on the basis of the gut feeling, based on the pattern, based on um, you know the uh, influence. That is the reason why last 10, 15 years of prize in the economics the Nobel Prize, especially in the economics, are not given to those who are experts in the mathematics or quantitative side of uh, economics. Somebody who are expert in the quantitative finance or quantitative economics, like it used to be a couple of decades back. The current prize in the economics, the current, uh, the last few or 10, 15 years, the Nobel Prize in economics is going to those who are expert of the behaviors in the behavior finance on the emotional side, side of economics. Because now people have started to realize that it is the emotion, the, the behavior, the trust factor that really drives the world and the economy and the business, not the facts and figures. How to leverage that? Being part of the right group, having the right image, 
your image, your reputation is what people talk about, they speak about, they, uh, they utilize while making the decisions. Your reputation remains at a place when you are not. Your reputation guard your interest in your absence. And your reputation is communicated through publicity, your network. When people can talk about you in your absence, you win. You win, you earn more, you succeed more. And that is done through the publicity. Branding basics. So what to do? Set a clear focus for your blogs based on the career goals. Produce timely and original content. Integrate with social media channel. So integrate all the different channels together so that you don't have to put too much effort ultimately. Save your time. Strive for consistency. Be consistent in your video, in your picture, your image. Don't give surprise and shocks. Don't make people put the effort to recognize you. Include your resume on your LinkedIn profiles, social media profiles, so that if somebody likes you, like their like your video, the article, and they want to hire you, you want to contact you for business, they don't have to contact through the email and you respond to them two days later. We are in the era when the business are done instantly. It is done on the speed of thought. So have your resume, your CV, and details updated on the social media sites. Share the content, which helps everyone do their job. If you are exporting something and you think that people don't know much about this, develop a training plan or PPT and upload this publicly. That will help everyone and you'll get a reward, which is called publicity, the branding, the visibility, and the respect and trust. So follow and comment others, others blog, share, like, share your visions, your write your comments on others blog and post as well, because then you will be coming in their attention. Reach out to recruiters, not just for the interview, but also for information. They can help you guiding. They can tell you what is happening in the market and share the insights that they have at their end. And that is very, very useful because they know the market, job market, what is going on and where it is leading to. And by talking to them, you can get ready better, better than your competition. Branding basics don't. So these are the list where what uh, just to highlight what you should not be doing when it comes to branding. So sloppy design or any content which does not make sense or not very qualitative. There should not be very extreme negative or political, you know, image created online keep your contacts ready but don't miss them keep the email id and everything professional don't make it uh, too weird don't be easily offended by critical comments be open to accept the feedback and comments online and respond to them positively don't spam any group it goes against your professional image Don't comment on anything and everything any company is posting or any single person is posting because sometimes the scarcity breeds the respect as well. So be scarce when it comes to commenting or sharing your thought as well. Ask recruiters for jobs through the social media. If you just openly ask everyone that will be, that will put the recruiters in an uncomfortable situation. So. That's not also the right way. If you want to contact, contact, try to get their email ID, try to get their number, and then up, uh, seek a time of call, get an appointment, and then call to them. So be methodical and professional when you when it comes to contacting people on social media. So finally, now I have uh, some tools to help you in job search and building your profile and image as well. In social media so some of these tools are provided just for the reference when you start looking for the job or when you want to build your resume you can use these tips and tools 
if you want the copy of this PPT, you can send an email to me on connect at the rate princesapient.com. I'll, I'll write it here. So some, uh, if you send an email to this email ID, somebody will respond to you with the PPT and you can get this information, especially the appendix part. So what we cover in the appendix is some checkpoints, some best practices for resume building. Don't put everything on the air. Have a master list of all jobs. And put the best stuff above the fold. Above the fold means like if you see the newspaper, there's a fold in between, right? The key news are published on above the fold because that's what you will read in the first glance. That's what is read most of the time. So similarly, imagine your resume also has a fold and try to keep the best effort, best stuff on above the fold side. Keep things chronologically in the sequence of timing. Design your resume in a skimmable fashion so that people can read and get the gist of your skill set and your personality and your achievements in just 10, 15 seconds. Make it such a, you know, templated or tabular wise so that it is easy to scheme and glance it and understand what you're all about. So make it skimmable. Don't have too many jargons and technical words because remember, it is not read by functional expert of the, your area. It is read by maybe a hiring manager who are a few level above or a HR manager who might not be uh, familiar, familiar with the jargons of your role. So keep it one level down. Like um, it should be made for someone who is a relatively layman for your function. Okay. Secondly, so other key point for resume are give everything in terms of number or at least uh, most of the items in terms of the number because if you're saying that you have saved the cost for your organization and uh, you have innovated a process, what is the bottom line? How much cost saving occurred? How many FT were saved? What was the real change? So you need to provide a number behind all these statements in the resume. That will be more convincing because numbers not only um, attract the attention, but also it convinces better. So make it quantifiable. Moving on, there are some other points that you can go through. Do the proofreading, do the reference, uh, do the proofreading, make it more professional. Uh, don't have uh, any spell checks. Save it as a PDF so that the word or the template basically do not move when it uh, reaches the hiring manager. Hi highlight your achievements, the skill sets, not just the percentage, percentage and GPA because they do not matter really after a certain year or actually to the hiring manager. They want to know what value you bring on the table. Connect to employment agencies and the job portals as many as, po as possible, update them on a regular basis. Maximize your reach out to the job market. There are a list of some websites that you can go through. There is a SEC job portal for finance and accounting professionals. Then there's some website for government jobs as well. Furthermore, I have enlisted here a few more websites, actually 21 more websites. I have also provided some useful video links for you to go through to help you strategize your career, interview, salary negotiations. And finally, there's a technique called STAR technique, how to answer the scenario-based questions in the interview. So ex explain the situation, then talk about the task that you were supposed to do, what action you took and what was the result. So that should be a structure for scenario-based questions. Then I have a list of some scenario-based questions for you to practice and keep your answers ready. 
So 22 questions for that. And finally, there are some technical questions and uh, technical questions which are for accounting and finance professional. With this, I complete this uh, discussion. And if you have any further questions, query, you can drop the comments in, in, um, uh, uh, under the video. You can also connect to me on connect at the rate fincepient.com. So here is the email. Actually, I'll give my personal email ID. Or you can call on this number and we can discuss further queries or question from you. So best of luck with job search and brand building and looking forward to hear from you. Thank you so much for your time. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button because then I will have more and more updates uh, in few weeks, you'll be benefiting and we can exchange the thoughts. So please hit the subscribe button as well. And I will be posting more such videos.